Hey guys, I'm back to work on the Dumont. I'm hoping very soon to be able to power this set up. Now here's that high voltage lead I left off in the last video with this just being a bare end. Well, I ended up salvaging a high voltage anode cup from an Admiral TV. I think it's going to work just great. Now, I was wondering about the high voltage output on this only being 12,000 volts. Well, it turns out that these sets originally came with a 17 AP4 picture tube, and that does run on 12,000 volts. However, this set now is a 17 BP4, and those typically run at 14,000. So, uh, this this tube, uh, this picture tube, tests really, really strong. So I'm sure it'll produce a picture of 12,000 volts, but it's probably not going to be quite as bright or crisp as it could be. Maybe it's possible to tweak the drive on this to bump up the high voltage up a little bit. Um, but probably best uh, not to overdrive anything. So uh, I, won't be, you know, I don't want to burn anything out or you know, shorten the life of any components. Uh, so I'm back working underneath the chassis. Just a few more paper caps to replace. Uh, or so I thought. I got three more in here. But... So I just took a look inside this metal box here. It's a little tuning unit. That's what's inside this dashed line here. Well, it turns out that there are some caps in there. So I did a bunch of little screws to loosen this up. It's kind of tricky to get out of and bending things out of the way. Having this external phono input doesn't help matters. But at least I've bent it back enough that I can look inside. Indeed, there are two paper caps really buried down in there. And uh, some resistors to check, mica cap, some coils, another mica cap. So, I think I can just kind of muscle this out of the way. I guess even just like that, it's probably good enough. Uh, I don't know, replace those caps. And then I still haven't touched the electrolytics yet. So I have to replace these last few paper caps. I'll tackle the electrolytics and then finally try powering the setup. I was finally able to work that cover off so I can really get in here and work. So I already clipped the one cap out. I'm about to replace it and now I'm checking resistors. And I've noticed something I've seen in a few other sets too is that. All of the higher value resistors are fine. Like 22K, 10K, 18K. But the low value ones, like this guy up here, should be 68 ohms. But when I measure it, 105. Almost double. And similarly, this 270 ohm measures about 380. So, uh, I've heard in the past uh, the, a contradictory thing that it's often the high value resistors that are really out of whack. But I've been finding quite often it's the low value ones, and those are typically the, uh, the cathode resistors. Like there's that 68 ohm, actually it's 68 ohm and 270 ohm with a cap uh, filter. So both of these are way off, which means this tube is going to be biased way off. So definitely a good idea to replace those. I'm working on replacing these two can electrolytics right now. It should be easy to do. This is just a single suction, so just two wires. Disconnect those. Now I'm working on pulling these wires off. Then there are hose clamps on the other side, and these will just slide right out. Now, off of one of these was a fuse. This is a quarter amp fuse on the flyback. It's, uh, that guy right there. Now, this one's burned out, and I doubt it was the original because it's not a proper pigtail fuse. It's a regular quarter amp fuse, or I mean, um, you know, standard size fuse, and they soldered leads onto the end. Probably not how it was done at the factory. So it was probably replaced at least once, and then this one's burned out, and they clipped on one of these deals and stuck another fuse on it. So, this may have blown several fuses at some point in its life. 
So, uh, again, makes me a little concerned about the high voltage stuff, but uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed. And if you recall, earlier on when I first powered this up, I did get a bit of a spark out of it, so I think that's a good sign. After I unmounted those two cardboard insulated electrolytics, I actually put them in the oven for a while at about 300 degrees until the tar got soft and I managed to pull the covers off. In the past I've used a heat gun, but the problem is you put this over the heat gun and you're roasting the cardboard, which is acting as an insulator, and it's not doing a very good job of getting the tar inside hot. And often I end up charring the cardboard uh, by the time I get the tar loosened up. So I just put these in the oven, which heats the whole thing up from all sides evenly and uh, able to get it out without too much trouble. And this one especially had a whole lot of tar. I think if I had just used a heat gun on this, I would have had a very difficult time getting it off. Now that they are off, I'll heat these up again and wipe off as much tar as I can. Because if I leave all the tar in there and on here after I restuff it, it's not going to go in very well unless I heat the tar up again. I don't want to deal with that, so I want to get off as much excess as possible. Then I'm just going to cut these guys open somewhere around about here with a very sharp utility knife and then gut them and mount new caps and then stick them back inside the cardboard sleeves, remount them and hook them back up and then move on to the other three electrolytics which are right one, two, three here. I finished recapping this guy up here which had three 10 microfarad caps inside of it. And I just remounted this guy, which is a sing single uh, 33 microfarad. Just have to reconnect two wires. Now I'm working on this guy, which is the main B plus power supply filter. It's a dual 40 microfarad at 450 volts. And I just uh, cut it open and got the insides out. And I wanted to pause to comment at how dried out this thing looks. So, uh, you know, no signs of it ever, ever shorting out or anything, but. Uh, I wouldn't have uh, trusted this to run for much longer. So, got two nice new skinny Nichicons to fit inside there. No problem. And once I get those two mounted, I think I'll try powering this up with a CRT for the first time. I know there's still two electrolytics to redo, but these are the main filter caps here. And those are the ones that I'd be most concerned about. Let's see, the schematic there. Uh, these guys, so here's the 240s. And uh, the 50, I uh, also got that down in here. And another new electrolytic over here. So not all the electroly electrolytics uh, rather, are inside these cans. And there are 30, I think is that guy. And there's the three tens I replaced. So in other words, I have recapped the entire power supply. The other two caps, uh, that would be for the audio output cathode bypass, vertical output tube, cathode bypass. There might be one on the horizontal output tube. Uh, not sure. Uh, at any rate, um, you know, I powered this up once before with all the old caps in there and nothing bad happened, so I think I've done enough work at this point that I want to see if this thing can actually uh, do something. Uh, I guess there are still two paper caps left, one here and one here. All the rest have been replaced. Okay, I think I'm ready for a power-up. I finished wiring in both filter caps, I replaced the quarter amp fuse for the flyback, I hooked up the yoke, CRT base, high voltage lead, this is an 8XP4 test CRT, designed just for working on sets like this. Now my one concern is that if this set powers up properly, this electromagnetic focus coil can push the electrons uh, off to the side or defocus them so much you might not see a glow on here. I've had that problem before. 
but it's a heck of a lot easier to do this and to pull out the full size CRT. Although I do happen to have a spare uh, 17 BP402 lying around, so if this powers up all right and there seems to be a high voltage, we don't get an image. I might pull one of those out. I just happen to have one uh, not 20 feet away that I could hook up fairly easily. All right, but before that, I wanted to see if I can turn this thing on. Also, uh, I posted some photos on Flickr, and one of my fans noticed that one of these new high voltage ceramic caps I installed uh, might might arc. If you recall, the old high voltage caps were these big, long tubular. Well, now they're these little jelly bean like ceramics with then long leads, and one of those leads comes within about a half an inch of a corona ring. And it's supposed to be about six and a half or seven thousand volts. And I don't think that's enough to, to jump across about half an inch, but <laughs> we will find out. If it does arc, easy enough to rectify. Alright, so I've got the PR57 going. I'm out in the mode to measure current on the 0 to 4 amp scale. And uh, let's see, all the tubes are installed. So let's go. I'm going to turn the lights off too because I want to see if that 5U4 arcs over when I turn this thing on. Huh, it didn't. Interesting. I thought with the new filter caps in there, uh, and this tube having so many sets, there might be a flash over like I've had with some Admiral sets, but no. Alright, we're in at about one and a half amps. Everything seems to be okay. The eye tube has lit up. It's a frame or not. Down there. Nothing in CRT though, but like I said, I was half expecting that now. Plus, I don't know how these controls are adjusted. Uh, as I've said numerous times before, no matter how many times I power up a set for the first time, I never get used to it. I hate doing it. <laughs> I've always got this, you know, anxious feeling that uh, something may go horribly wrong. No, there's no speaker attached, so I won't hear anything. I think one of these is mode for phono, TV, and FM. And I imagine if it's not in TV, we're not going to get any high voltage, so I better consult the cabinet. And one of these will be brightness, one of these will be contrast, horizontal hold, vertical hold. Oh, this, this must be focus. Very, very coarse. I am um, wire wound control. on the CRT. Nothing when I turned it off either. No, um, I would take a high voltage rope and test it, but with the cup being on the CRT, I can't get in there very easily, so I may have to disconnect that to uh, check the high voltage. Okay, conveniently, TV mode is the middle position, so that's TV. And the two controls here are brightness and contrast, so crank those up. And I, I could just turn the horizontal kick in, so there's a good chance we do have high voltage. There's absolutely nothing on that CRT. I'm not sure how this tuning guy is supposed to work. We do have a local low power analog station on channel 6. And as I tune by it, nothing is happening on the eye. Now I'm in the FM radio band, nothing's happening. I don't, I don't have an antenna hooked up, but but it might be enough. A signal leaking through that something would happen. Alright, a little anticlimactic, uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing seems to be happening good, but nothing ha uh, bad is happening either, which is always a good thing too, so I think what I really ought to do is somehow figure out, do I actually have high voltage or not, which, oh, I guess I'll just loosen up that suction cup and see if I've got any high voltage. 
Okay, I had a little pop on there when I brought a ground near that anode. So I'm going to try doing something that I don't think I've ever shown you guys before, which is to bring a grounded screwdriver near the anode lead. All the sets turned on. Oh yeah. <laughs> we got high voltage. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Well, of course I don't really want to do this in the dark either, because I don't want to directly short that out, because uh, that would be bad for fly back so anyway I'm just gonna turn that off. We definitely uh, have high voltage so I am going to grab a different CRT. Well, I, you know, I'm gonna try some more first. I don't actually know that this test CRT's filament lit up. I haven't really checked that so I'll discharge this thing first. I want to push that cap back on. These things have a bit of a memory too, so even though you've discharged it, they can rebuild a little bit of a charge. Get that back on. Base. Right, let's just turn this thing on. Uh huh. The touch CRT filament is not lit. So, base could be loose. This could have burned out since the last time I used it, which seems unlikely because they make these things pretty darn tough. Or maybe the base is just, the connection's just loose. Could be part of that mode switch too. I don't know what all that mode switch it does, but it might switch the filament off and on. I imagine when you're in FM or phono mode, they do not have the filament on the CRT running. Because that's just a waste of life on the CRT, so there could be a dirty or bad switch contact. Let's give this one a try. Nope. CRT filament is not lighting up. I'm going to take this mode switch a few times. Nope. Alright, well, I'll try a different CRT. Well, this is kind of confusing. I checked the continuity on the test CRT, and it definitely it's filament continuity. So I pulled off the CRT connector and stuck an AC voltmeter onto the filament supply pins, and yeah, we got about 6.3 volts AC. So I don't know. I'm going to pull out a different CRT. Stop screwing around with this one. Rather than pull out the full-size 17-inch picture tube, which I realized would be a bit much for my workbench, I went the other way. I pulled out my little 5-inch test CRT, which I used recently on my RCA 630TS project, so I know it's good. And I popped the cover off the high-voltage cage, so I can take a look inside while the set's running. So, let's give this a try. Yeah, CRT filament is lighting up this time. All right. And there is something on the CRT. However, we don't, we've only got deflection in one direction. And I can hear some corona. I don't see anything, but it could very well be what my friend was suggesting, which is the cap that I cannot see without taking this cover off. So I'm going to guess we got no vertical, because... The horizontal yoke winding is part of the whole flyback circuit, and if we have high voltage, then you've got to get some horizontal deflection. So I checked that vertical output transformer, and it seemed to be okay. It could be the vertical winding on the yoke, which I really hope it isn't. Uh, it could be the vertical output tube. I haven't checked any of the tubes for that matter. It could be the vertical oscillator. There's still a couple of paper caps I haven't replaced, so lots of possibilities. Uh... So that, that's all a good sign. I'm going to give this 8XP4 one more shot. 
It's got to just be a bad connection, making a bad socket or something. And I've used this before. I'm sure it's good. I pulled out a soldering iron and touched up the pins on the base of the CRT. And I'm going to give this one a try now. Yep, I got it. Cool. It occurred to me too, another problem could be, I really hope it's something as simple as the uh, yoke connector, there could be a, a bad connection in there. Nope, only deflection in one angle, or, you know, uh, only deflection in one direction. Alright, well, that is a good sign for first power, but I think exploded. We've got high voltage, we'll call that a raster, so we've got deflection in one orientation, but... Uh, we got plenty of stuff to check, so keep your fingers crossed that's not something really critical like the yoke or the vertical output transformer. Uh, that's going to be it for tonight, though. Uh, it's getting kind of late. I'm a little bit tired. I don't want to do anything stupid, so I'll pick up on this in the next segment.